I'm your host, Neil Howard, here on Health Professional Radio. Thank you for joining us. We're going to be having a conversation this evening with uh, Dr. Ross Walker. He's joining us here on the program to discuss a new study that was published in Heart, Lung, and Circulation that evaluates ubiquinol. It's the uh, active form of the powerful antioxidant coenzyme Q10, and it's for heart health and patients who are taking cholesterol management medication. Welcome to Health Professional Radio, Dr. Ross Walker, and thank you so much for taking the time. Neil, it's a pleasure to talk with you, my friend. Well, give our listeners a bit of background into your area of expertise, if you would, and then let's talk about this uh, published study. Sure. Well, I'm I'm a preventative cardiologist, and I also uh, have my own national radio show in Australia where I talk about all aspects of medicine, whether it be the best aspects of orthodox medicine or the best aspects of complementary medicine as well, because I think the best way to practice medicine is to be integrative. So use whatever's best for your patients that has some evidence base behind it. And this, this study that was published in Heart, Lung and Circulation um, looks, looks at the fact that there are many people suffering from heart failure and also many people who are put on statin therapy and whether ubiquinol can have some sort of benefit in that situation. When you're talking about some of these statins, are we talking about the statins that are just a heart patient, uh, someone who's been diagnosed with heart disease or someone who simply has high cholesterol? No, we're just talking about the use of statins generally, but there are many people with more end-stage heart disease, and we call mm-hmm. that heart failure. Okay. So heart failure is basically the inability of the, pu- of the heart to pump blood around the body to meet the body's needs or the inability of the heart to relax properly to pump blood around the body as well and so often these people are also put on statins now the problem with this is that when you have heart failure the coenzyme q10 levels in your in the heart muscle have been reduced because the heart's not working as well Mm -hmm. and then you give a statin drug which has also been shown to deplete coenzyme q10 in the mitochondria and in the muscle cells which is probably the reason why people who take statins maybe around 10 to 20 percent do get muscle aches and pains so what we want to do is restore the coenzyme Q10 levels. And, and clearly the way to do that is by giving coenzyme Q10. And it's my view with my own clinical experience, having used this for well over 10 years, the best version of coenzyme Q10 is the active version, which is ubiquinol, not the standard CoQ10, which is ubiquinone. Because here's one of the problems now. When we hit 50 years old, there's an enzyme called diaphorase that metabolites, metabolizes ubiquinone to ubiquinol, and that starts to be reduced over the age of 50. Mm-hmm. So even if you take ubiquinone, you're not getting as much CoQ10 as you should be to replenish what, what is lacking in people with heart failure or in people on statins. If you take coenzyme Q10 you know, over the course of your lifetime, just as a, a mm-hmm. course of, of a dietary thing, is that, will that prevent yep. heart failure? Oh, no, I don't think anyone can say that. The studies have never been done. But, but just to, to give you an example, I've been taking ubiquinol for well over 10 years purely for energy. And there was one, one study where they treated elderly people, and I'm, I'm certainly not elderly, but, but one study where they treated el- elderly people in their mid-70s uh, with a combination of, of coenzyme Q10 and selenium uh, just for a four-year period and then followed them up for 10 years and found that there was a significant reduction in mortality just in that group. So I think just in terms of maintaining good energy in your mitochondria, those little fuel packs in the cell that feed energy into the cell, CoQ10 is one of the major drivers of that. And I think, again, the best version would be ubiquinol. Do you reduce statin intake? Do you eliminate it? How how does it work um, with the ubiquinol? Well, the problem is there are many people have comorbid conditions. So, for example, if you have significant coronary artery disease, there's a very strong evidence base that statins do reduce the natural history of, of the coronary artery disease by shrinking down the size of plaques. Mm-hmm. But the problem then, you get the, the collateral damage of the, of the problems with CoQ10. There's also some effects on vitamin K2 and selenium when you're on statin therapy. So really the best way to overcome this, if, you, if the person needs to continue on their statins, and, and again, the people who do are people with established coronary artery disease, so, for example, you might have heart failure for another cause. Many people have what we call a dilated cardiomyopathy due to familial causes or a post-viral thing. We're seeing now with this dreadful COVID pandemic, many people are getting myocarditis as a consequence of mm-hmm. COVID, and it's got nothing to do with coronary artery disease. Now, I, I personally believe, and you raised this at the start of the interview, that giving people a statin just because their cholesterol is elevated, there's no evidence that that helps whatsoever. 
And in fact, a Professor Valines from Philadelphia presented at the European Society of Cardiology meeting last year a study to show that if your coronary calcium score, so a CT scan that takes a picture of your arteries without injections or dye, if your coronary calcium score is below 100, there is no value being on a statin regardless of your cholesterol over the age of 50. So I think all people who have a high cholesterol, in fact, all males over 50, all females over 60, in my view, should have the Mm -hmm. coronary calcium score to have the picture of their arteries to see whether they do need a statin in the first place. But if they do have established vascular disease, they've had a heart attack, stent, bypass, or they've got a high coronary calcium score, a statin should be part of their regimen if they can tolerate the statin. But it's my clinical experience that probably around 10% of people do just get such intense muscle aches and pains that they can't. But I routinely put all of my patients who I'm giving statins to also on ubiquinol to try and combat that issue. Do all of the candidates for this uh, ubiquinol combination, does diet play any part in this study at all? Or do you just take someone who has heart failure, period, regardless of their lifestyle during the study? Oh, no, you you can, in terms of that, it's my view that what I call the five keys of being healthy, which is having no addictions, good quality sleep, good quality eating and less of it, three to five hours of exercise and happiness, those five keys of being healthy are the best five drugs in the planet. Um, but and I, and I think that's not negotiable for all of us, whether we have heart failure or whether we're perfectly healthy. So diet is vitally important. But unfortunately, as far as uh, coenzyme Q10 goes, you have to have about three kilos a day of steak uh-huh. to, to get the 100 milligrams of ubiquinol in your system. So obviously that's inappropriate as far as diet goes. But mm-hmm. there are so many other benefits from being on a good diet as far as your heart health goes, your um, prevention of cancer, uh, prevention of Alzheimer's disease. So all of us should be following sensible eating habits. And the only diet that has any strong evidence base is the Mediterranean diet, which has been shown to reduce uh, heart disease, cancer, Alzheimer's, anywhere between 30 to 50%. Would you say that statins are prescribed as much in Australia as in, say, the United States or, or, or Britain? Well, no, I think it, we're probably about the same. I know that mm-hmm. one in three people over the age of 45 in the U.S. are taking statins. In Australia, we have a population of 25 million people, so nothing like the U.S. And we're, we're, there is about 19 million prescriptions written every year for statins. So that's 12 scripts per person per year, so one script a month. So just less than 2 million out of our 25 million population are being prescribed statins. And I think many of those prescriptions are inappropriate because these are just given to people because their cholesterol is high, not because they have any evidence of established vascular disease, as per the the study from Professor Valines. In In the Annals of Internal Medicine, one of the best journals in the world, in January 2019, published a study showing that If your estimated 10-year risk for a vascular event done by risk calculators incorporating coronary calcium scoring, it was less than 15%. There was no net value from being on a statin drug. So I I have a bit of a problem with the over-prescription of statins. And and the, the point is here that the lifestyle keys that I mentioned, those five lifestyle keys, reduce your risk for vascular disease by about 83%. A statin drug reduces your risk somewhere between 20 to 30% in standard doses and a bit higher in big doses, but also with the potential for side effects the higher the dose you go to. Doctor, where can our listeners go online and get some more information about this study? Well, if, if you just go to um, the the website about the heart, lung, uh, the heart, Lung and Circulation Journal, and they can certainly get a copy of the study from there. Well, I, I appreciate you joining us here on Health Professional Radio and speaking with us, and I'm hoping that we'll, uh, we'll speak again in the future. Neil, I'd I'd be delighted. It was wonderful talking to you, my friend. You as well. You've been listening to Health Professional Radio. I'm your host, Neil Howard, in conversation with Dr. Ross Walker, talking about a new study published in Heart, Lung, and Circulation. Audio copies of this program are available at hpr.fm and healthprofessionalradio.com.au. You can also subscribe to the podcast on iTunes. Listen in, download at SoundCloud, and be sure and subscribe to our YouTube channel at youtube.com, Health Professional Radio.